right, YouTube people, hello and welcome to this episode of My Paramotor Wouldn't Start. So, not really a huge surprise, the Tornado 280 having some form of troubles, I'm not sure what, but I changed out the battery. It's just turning over extremely slowly, so I changed out the battery to all the different batteries. I tried four or five different batteries that we have all of which should be fully charged and create a nice vigorous starting action but quite the opposite is happening so good friend Bart there let me borrow his uh, Skymax with a Moster 185 on it which is a pull start nice and reliable so that's what I'm going to be flying however it is a large harness I've never flown this machine before and I will say the backs of my legs hit the bottom of the cage bar and I wonder if Bart has the same issue in launching it, but it is one thing I knew I didn't like about this frame. If you have a Skymax frame, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. But not that it can't be overcome. Just something that I'm not a big fan of. I really prefer a nice, kind of smaller, nimble machine just because I like to do a lot of sketchy launches in difficult situations having to avoid different obstacles, sometimes some hook launches and stuff, just so I don't have to hike out and find a nice big long stretch. Um, it's not that I'm being lazy, I honestly like to kind of keep my skill set higher and try the different tricky difficult launches. So I kind of just like to be able to have that skill, but at the same time I like to have a motor that doesn't massively impede my uh, ability to do so. so. Yeah, there he goes. Wing is up, power on. Run, 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 run. Oh, he's gonna have a interesting time of it. Keep going, keep going. Nice, buddy, good job. That is the one thing when you are not used to a wing that overshoots. As you saw there, there is a big tendency to wanna like kind of think you're flying. So always, always keep your feet down until you're about 100 feet in the sky or at least know you're gonna get there. I'm more comfortable flying new wings than I am flying new motors. I think, especially just because of the fit. And as we all know in the paramotoring group, the launch is by far the uh, hardest part of the entire gig, so as long as you're good on that. All right, so on a small wing, barely any run. As soon as that starts to come up, check it. Run, 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 run. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Checked it a little too hard, you see that? Scenario right there. Probably could have cured it with some more running, but didn't do it. All right. We're gonna do the diligent thing and set ourselves back up over here. Okay, a little more gusto this time. Ugh. turning so much. All looks well above. So is it a harness thing? I think Bart said it likes to turn. My trims are set about perfectly, so that shouldn't be it. But if I'm stationary, it wants to turn right. Especially under throttle. Interesting. So either it's just a massive amount of torque or something, but now the Viper, there's nothing I can't correct with a weight shift, but it would aggravate me as for sure that was my, uh... yeah, that's weird. I wonder why there's so much torque. I'm not positive, but I think that there would be more torque on a two blade than there is on my three blade. I'm running a 135 centimeter, or my bad, I think it's a 130 centimeter on my back fly. And I believe this is 130 centimeter. The only difference is mine's a three blade, this is a two. So I'm not sure if there's more torque to compensate for or not. But perhaps that's the issue. Okay, so we're gonna get some tunes going on. I don't even have my headset turned on yet. 
There we go. Prepare the headset. Well, we're going to do a review on the SkyMax machine. That's how we're going to start. At the same time, I can give you a review on my Viper 5. Um, if you've seen any of my videos recently, you know I fly it most of the time now. And that's for a good reason. I would say that's probably my second launch failed on this wing ever. And the first one might be my first failed launch. I'm not positive. First or second failed launch on this wing. I've failed many launches, but on this wing, I'd say that's my first or second. Um, and definitely the first time of it not, like, just coming up and just falling behind me. Which, that's just because I was trying not to do what Bart did, and I did something worse. That is the trickiest thing about these small wings, is uh, not having your wing overshoot you on launch. At least that's the thing that I struggle with the most. Alright, let's get down in here and see what's going on down low. So the feel so far of the air is fantastic. Okay, so... So far on the SkyMax, mm, not a big fan. First initial thoughts. Now, I will admit, it always takes some getting used to on a way or on a motor, especially if you haven't flown it at all ever, and it's slightly too big for you. So, I will try to take that into consideration. But my initial thoughts is. I don't like how much it seems to want to torque. I don't know if that has to do with the geometry of the motor or what exactly is the uh, culprit for that, but it's something that I notice. Uh, that and that uh, whole whacking thing. However, I will say that time that I chopped the back of my foot with my propeller Maybe it wouldn't have happened had I been on a motor with a bigger cage below it. I don't know. But I wouldn't take that trade-off because I think that the risk that I face by having that big cumbersome thing hanging below me probably provides bigger dangers just in my ability to launch than what it prevents in my ability to kick my legs into my own propeller. Because that was just a thing of ignorance and I don't think they should just have to safety that. You just don't put your legs back that far. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the blame on that one for sure. All right, let's get down in here and see how she is. I think one of the reasons that I like flying my Viper so much these days, um, well, it's an insanely fun wing. It's more lifty than my Freeride 15. I'd say it's very comparable to my 17, but it doesn't lose as much elevation doing maneuvers as my 17 for as much energy that I gain. It's a strange thing that I haven't yet quite figured out, but it seems like on the 17, or on my 17 meter free ride, I drop a lot when I go into a turn, a hard turn, I drop a lot in elevation, but then uh, I don't feel like I gain as much energy to keep the wing inflated and like a barrel roll move as I do with my 16 meter Viper. So it kind of makes sense in the part where I don't gain as much energy, but at the same time you think energy would be completely re relative to how much you dive because that's how you're gaining speed. And I'm not 100% positive, you know, I don't have a good scientific way to figure this stuff out. That's based all off of feel. But, yeah, the way that it feels is this, <laughs> when you go into a turn, uh, it spins a lot. Like, it really rotates a lot. So, I'll show you in a little bit here. I'll gain some more elevation, and then I'll show you how that, how that looks. And full weight shift left. And full throttle. And she is 
twisting a lot. Look at the gap difference. Yeah. So if I try to maintain a neutral position under full throttle, I mean, it's, it's bad. It's frighteningly bad. Yeah. So that's unusual. I definitely don't notice that on my other motor, which is strange. I don't know what that would be if the if the, the arms here, the swing arms, just don't have as much counter torque steer built into them, or what's causing that feeling. But uh, Or maybe it's the two-blade thing. I'm not sure what the cause would be there. All right, so here's what I was talking about, though. So, like, if you go into a turn, right? If you go, uh, I really like going right. We're going to go right. So it spins a lot, right? So, like, I just did a full 360. Basically, I got it to dive, and it just went into, a, like, a full 360, right? <coughs> and on the free ride, to get that same amount of, like, just turned down, I'm thinking it's maybe, like, a quarter to a half of a turn. Like, I'm maybe doing, you know, a 45-degree turn, somewhere between 45 and 100, or four, between 45 and... No, that's not right. Somewhere between 90 and 180, yeah. So, but on this, it's like, like you saw, I'm basically doing a full 360 to get it to spin down, to, to point down at the ground. So it's just a very different feeling as far as that goes, and I kind of like this spin. <laughs> um, other than that, all right, so we're going to go down here, check it out. Scoo! Yoo-hoo-hoo! I know this is not something you should do flying this closely. We're really hoping that Bart's thing doesn't die. And I honestly think I'd have enough glide to be able to get over it anyways. Yeah. No motor was involved in the help of that. <laughs> Gosh, it's such a freaking freeing feeling being at the tops of the trees. So I think Bart just recently did a engine out options video. And this is not a good place to be. But I do like the trees a lot. <laughs> Gosh, that's a beautiful sunset. Look at that. With the dust of the plow. That's the Indiana sunset right there, boys and girls. So think of magical. Think of magical beauty. <laughs> okay, anyways, moving on with the review of this motor. I know Bart has had good reliability on it. All right, we're gonna come in here and do a little roadside foot drag action, maybe. Check for traffic. Checking for traffic. <laughs> oh, it's a glorious thing. All right. Oh, I just took a plug to the eye. Ouch. Ow. I think he stumped me. Holy crap. Ow. Poor Buck, though. He died. You know, I did better off than he did. Only temporary blindness. I don't think he's ever barrel rolled this thing before, so we'll probably go do that just to check out how she does on a barrel roll. He would appreciate it. I'm sure of it. All right, so we've gained ourselves a little bit of elevation. We're going to do a barrel roll on the old BART machine. to do with the paramotor, but <laughs> a lot of G-forces on that one. A lot of G-forces. It all just feels so weird when you're not on your own stuff. Shouldn't feel this weird. I just don't feel that comfortable. All right, screw it. Let's just get comfortable. down here and do some slalom. We gotta really get this thing filled out. Felt out. Filled out. Can't even speak right. Alright. What a 
glorious night. It's freaking beautiful here. All right, so the trick with the with the low slalom. The trick with the low slalom is making sure that you don't pendulum too high for the amount of dive that you need to be able to do. So it's an interesting thing and you also can't just come up short and decide not to turn enough. Like you can't, you have to stop the upward swing before you get there if you don't have enough downward elevation to lose, if that makes sense. So like for instance, as we go here, all right, so now we're coming close. All right, so I can only let it build so much, so I'm doing outside break. All right, and then I'm pulling inside break enough. You've got to bring it over. All right, and then uh, there we go. Enough break there. And now inside break. All right. And then we pull the inside break so we don't get too big. Now a little bit of inside break. I misspoke. I was holding outside break enough because it was starting to build. It was going to get too big, and that's that whole thing. You can't let it get too big. It can only get so big. You have to be able to have enough room to dive, so you have to take all that into consideration. A lot of calculations going on quickly, and obviously it's it's mostly intuitive feeling once you get used to flying a bunch. But very much something you have to consider if you're wanting to do low flying. It's one of the more dangerous things to do, just because obviously the thing that's going to hurt you is extremely close to you, so the room for air is very small, sometimes as small as a couple inches of room, depending on how close you're slaloming to the ground. All right, we got to take into consideration we got trees right there. Okay, and power turn, both brakes. There we go, swing it tight. Tight and tidy. Man, it smells beautiful. There is some flowers blooming these time of year. Swoop over into this field. Oh yeah, that looks like a foot draggable scenario. <laughs> Gosh, it's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, just the tips of the toes brushing through that tall grass. With that sunset and Bart flying around, that's just a freaking fantasy of glory. We'll swoop it in for a nice one. Woo-hoo-hoo! Around with some power. Yeah. Swing it up the other side. Both brakes. Swoop it down. Lean to the other side. Both brakes. Wrap that turn in. All right, inside brake. Both brakes. Inside brake, now off brakes, pendulum to the other side, inside brake, both brakes, swing it. Yoo! Up the other way, left brake, both brakes. Just left brake. All right, swing it out, right brake, both brakes. All right, bring it, left brake, both brakes, swing it in. We got one more, we gotta get ourselves out of here. Shoot! There it is. Always be cautious of how much energy you have when you go to climb. So when you do that, you're gaining quite a bit of energy. If you come out straight, you're going to gain a lot of height, but you got to be careful not to gain it too fast to where your wing wants to shoot forward to catch up because you're actually going to stall yourself. You're kind of heading into a stall position. Your wing will fix itself, but it might fix itself in the situation where it it dives so far forward that you get a bit of a frontal collapse. So you don't want that. So always be cautious as to how much uh, speed you have when you come out flat. All right, now let's drop into this field. Yoo! Woo! <laughs> Whoa, lots of speed, lots of energy. All right, both brakes. Start to sling her out. And both brakes. Left brake. And both brakes. 
It's such a, it's such a like delicate modulation that's difficult to describe. Oh, hey, there's my mother. Gosh, this smells glorious. It's all these thorn trees. There's these locust trees that are blooming and they are just amazing smelling. Hi, Mom! Hi! Those trees are fantastic smelling. Wow. All right, where's Bart at? There's a whole grove of those trees right here. It's beautiful up here. There is a grove of them right there. That fragrance is just sweet. Literally, just an amazing thing. Oh, there's Bart. I just want to get a whiff of them. Now there's a turkey in that tree. How glorious. Full-size turkey up in the tree. All right, Bart does not have any type of a mirror on this thing, so I'm going to have to use my phone to try to check my gas tank. Because I actually ran out of gas last time I flew. Eh, she's low, but... I still got a decent amount. <laughs> All right. I always love this area. It's just, I think it's just that childhood feeling. It's that glorious childhood slalom course. bunch of made-up obstacles, some real ones. Gaining elevation perfectly for that swell in the, in the land. And we're going to use that upward motion. Climb, climb, climb. And now it's pitching out, like I said. There we go. There's a coyote. I don't know if you can see that right there, Mr. Coyote. Hello, Mr. Coyote. I won't hurt you. <laughs> Glorious. It's a good size one. It's probably a 50 pounder or so. How beautiful. I love all animals. Just wanted to do some weirdness. There we go. That, that torque, uh, it doesn't have good torque compensation. <laughs> I will say that because I don't notice this much of an issue on any of my other motors. So I'm going to rate the torque compensation of this particular frame prop setup as a, I don't know, never really rated one before. So I'm going to say it's poor. <laughs> it's not great. I have not noticed a motor that I found it to be worse on. However, I have a view of this motor. Um, while I sit here climbing, say that I would definitely not buy one. I see the appeal because they made it so that the parts are reasonably priced, which all paramotors should be, but they're not. The cool thing about the frame is if you hurt a portion of it, potentially you can just buy that portion because it disassembles quite a bit. It's not like a, a standard like titanium frame where it's all one big tube modular scenario. And this, like, whereas this is more of a, you can take it apart, you know, it's a bunch of different pieces put together. So that's nice and appealing. Also, they have a setup so you can kind of break it down pretty quickly and all these bars kind of fold in so you can carry it. So that's kind of cool. So I'd say those are the pros for sure. Um, and it's quite robust, so if you plan on bouncing it around and doing stupid stuff like that, I'd say it's a fairly durable setup. The cons for me is the weight. It feels quite bulky. The torque compensation, I think, is rubbish. Unless I've got something going on with the harness not set up properly, so I will say there's potential that it's my own error. Um, the cost is pretty good, so I guess that's another pro. But yeah, so based on those three cons alone, I wouldn't buy it for that reason. It's a good machine. It's a good quality machine. 
but it's not the right fit for myself. If you're a taller person, the, the bar wouldn't be an issue at all. However, I am a six foot, just under six foot. So I'd say fairly average for a man. And if you are a shorter individual, I definitely would not recommend this frame. Um, I know, I think Skymax has a new frame that they came out with, I'm not positive. I don't know what the name of this one is. As far as I know, it's just the Skymax. But, uh, yeah. That's about all I have to say about it. Other than that, it does the job, you know. You can fly with it. It'll get you airborne. And if that's my, your only priority, then go for it. But I will say that my, uh, my Mac fly feels much more like a, uh, like a custom fit shoe. a nicely tailored suit you know it fits well it fits very well whereas this is more just kind of a one-size-fits-all kind of thing Bart looks like he's trying to practice some swoop landings something I should be doing as well that sunset's freaking fantastic Hard inside break as she comes back flat and off. Boom, there we go. Alrighty guys. Well I hope you enjoyed the video. It's probably gonna be a short one, but a sweet one. Please feel free to leave comments below if you have any questions and I will definitely answer them for you. And uh, I'll do my best to try to help you guys in any way I think I can. Until next time, fly safely, live life to the fullest at the same time. Peace out. Alrighty guys, so final thoughts on the SkyMax. It is a reliable machine, quite durable. Uh, you kind of pay for that in weight and agility, I would say. But uh, if durability and ease of replacing things is kind of your main priorities, I would say it's a pretty good machine. Um, the torque issue, I'm not 100% sure what that was about. Everything seemed fine when I landed as far as how I had the harness set up, so I don't exactly understand what was going on there, but uh, something to consider if you're looking at getting one. Other than that, I would say it is pretty good quality, pretty good build, and honestly decent value for the money. However, the few cons that I said as far as the agility, kind of the bulkiness feel of the machine, are the reasons that I wouldn't personally get one. I hope you guys liked the video. Please leave a comment below if you have any questions. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks a lot. See ya.